What's going on, y'all? Blessings, IG. This is rapper Brandon Smith. Welcome to Prayer Cypher's Truth Tuesdays on Wednesday. What? Yeah, y'all. We thank y'all for y'all patience. Um, we had to push Truth Tuesdays back to today. Um, uh, me and Dominique, we had a family emergency. We had a, a family member in the hospital. She's recovering. She's doing well. Praise the Lord. So, you know, we just had to make sure that, you know, as we minister unto others, that we also minister to those closest to us, which is our family. So we do thank y'all for y'all patience. We thank y'all for tuning in today. Um, we thank y'all for, you know, if if you guys had anything planned, you know, just shifting, you know, your plans around just so you can hear what God is saying in the season. So we thank y'all very much. Today's topic is the cost. The cost? The cost. The cost of discipleship. The cost of walking with Christ intimately. Because Christ will keep you if you want to be kept. So today we're going to talk about the cost of discipleship. We're going to start off with some prayer, okay? Father God, I thank you for this time, God, to give a word. God, I pray that this will be a word from the Most High, God. I pray that I will speak, God, from the heavenly realm, God. God, I pray that this will be all of you and none of me, God. I pray that as I decrease, God, that you would increase, God. I pray that there's a word for your people on today. God, I pray I will pray what you want me to pray. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll speak what you want me to speak. I'll share what you want me to share. God, I'm here to be used. I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. So today, again, the cost. I want to start off with the gospel. I'm going to go to Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew, Luke, and then we're going to circle through Galatians and Philippians in today. All right, y'all. So we're in Matthew. We're in chapter 12, verse 50. Jesus says, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now, again, we're talking about the cost. We're talking about you walking with Christ. We're talking about you getting saved, you getting baptized, you, you know, accepting that Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, being saved, what they called it, sold out for Christ. This is what we're talking about. And Jesus is, is giving us keys to what it looks like to walk this life out. Now, again, Jesus says, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So what is the cost here? Family. Following Christ will cost you family, most definitely, because before you come to Christ, your life before Christ, before you're born again, before you're renewed, it's going to be contrary to everything that you've ever seen before, your family's ever seen before. You may have grown up and your family has always known you to be this person. Your family always known you to be ratchet. You always hype. You've always drinking. You always smoking. You know, you always, you know, cussing people out and, you know, you, you're always in, in, in this in this lifestyle, in this paradigm that you can't shake. And your family is so used to seeing you that way. And now that you're in Christ, now that you're 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 reigning in Christ, you're 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 seated with Christ, you're walking with him, your family, they don't they can't compute. They they can't rock with that. They're like, no, we used to you know, we used to John John being being a hot boy. We used to him doing this. You know, we used to seeing him on the block. We see him on the corner. You know, we used to uh, Renee, you know, um, being loud, being ghetto, clubbing with us every weekend. No, uh, uh, Christ. No, don't. Mm -mm, this is our this is ours. You know, this is this is who we know. This is our family, you know, and 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 Christ is saying, no, this is going to be a cause because. Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So it may not always be blood relatives. You know, you y'all might be related through blood, but now in Christ, y'all are not related through spirit. It's completely different. It's going to be a completely different walk. It's going to be a completely different feel. And leading up to that verse, um, what happened was Jesus's mother and brother were looking for him. They wanted to come talk to him. And 
the man said, hey, Jesus, uh, your, your mom and your brother's outside. And then Jesus looked to his disciples and said, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So Jesus has already identified that, hey, I got some, some brothers, some sisters, some mothers in the spirit. They're not blood related. They are, we are spirit related. And we're, we have the Holy Spirit. We walking in the Spirit. It's a completely different ball game. And I'm going to circle back to this in a minute, too, before I close. So it's going to cost you your family. What else is it going to cost you? We, we adding up. The racks is just adding up. Racks on racks on racks on racks. It's going to cost you your circle of influence. We're going to go to the Gospel of Luke 14 and 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. What is Jesus saying? And sometimes, y'all, if y'all really read the word of God, Jesus is off the hook. Like, he will say some stuff that'll have you like, man, I thought you was, you know, I thought you was all grace, but Jesus Christ is truth and grace. And a lot of times, the truth that he's coming with, is it's gonna blow your mind. So what he's saying is that anyone that comes to me and does not hate, and he's not meaning hate because you know the word of God cannot go against itself because we already know the scripture, honor thy mother, thy father, your days will be long. Everybody know that. But so he, Jesus can't say to hate him, you know, because that's going contrary to God's word. What he's saying is you can't put anything above the calling of Christ. You can't put anything above your discipleship, not even your father, your mother, your wife, your children, and even your own life. It, the thing is that that paradigm, that, that thing that you're in, it, it can't supersede what Jesus is doing in your walk and what Jesus is doing in your life. All right, y'all, it's going to cost you some isolation. It's going to cost you some loneliness. Who wants to be isolated and who wants to be lonely? Jesus says, then Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. This is Matthew 16, 24. And when he says he must, you must deny yourself. Denying yourself means everything that you want and you know that God is not pleased. You, you have to deny yourself. You have to deny your flesh. Take up your cross being basically your burdens. Your, your cross being the things that have always been a struggle, have always been a weakness, a weak point. And to deal with that weak point, God has to isolate you. He has to get you by himself. He has to get you to yourself, by yourself, and he has to deal with those things. The thing the thing is if you for example, if you've always been an alcoholic, you know, that's your cross. You're taking up your cross. And to get to really deal with that cross, God has to isolate you. He has to really minister to you. Because, again, this is a personal relationship with God. This is not just, I go to church every Sunday, I think I'm a good person. This is a personal relationship that we're developing here. So that's going to cost you some isolation. It's going to cost you some loneliness because God has to, to get those things out of us. And we have to really bear that cross. So what else is it going to cost, man? It's just, it's just adding up, y'all. But be, be encouraged because there's a reward for every cost in Christ. So, y'all, it's going to cost us our selfish ambitions. Who wants to hear that? It's going to cost us our selfish ambitions. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. To me, that sounds like, hey, I've always lived the way I wanted to live. I am now crucified in Christ. I am now in the faith of the loves me and his he gave up his son for me. This is no longer my thing. This is no longer the me story. 
It's all about the he story, him, Christ, giving him the glory in my life. So I, you may have that job. You know, I, I got this this dream job and, you know, I'm, I'm working 60 hours a week and I'm living the dream and I, I'm, I'm running into Christ and like, man, this is a selfish ambition. God wants me to, you know, go part time and and, and serve him. You know, again, our selfish ambitions, we are now crucified in Christ. So, man, this is a a crazy cost, man. You know, we, we always hear about God and Jesus and, and all the wonderful things he's going to do for us. But what are we doing for him, y'all? We, we're paying the cost. And again, this, this cost of discipleship is costing us our family. It's costing us our surroundings, our paradigms, these mindsets that we think is right. But it's really contrary to the word of God. It's costing us our circle of influence. It's costing us some isolation. Nobody wants to be isolated. And now it's costing us our selfish ambitions because we think we know what's best for our lives. But Christ knows what's best for our lives. So now that we've caught these costs, now there's the reward. Yes, I gave y'all the vegetables and now we're about to get this candy. Let's get it popping. So the reward is your wildest dreams come true. <laughs> Philippians 3 and verses 7 and 8 says, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I've counted as a loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I've suffered the loss in all things, I count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. So the reward here is we gain Christ, we gain salvation, we gain knowledge, we gain wisdom, we gain peace, we gain a, a new paradigm, we gain a new perspective on life through the lens of Jesus Christ. We the the life that we've lived and we've lived this life and we've and and we pursued this life and we've always been in the driver's seat. We never let Jesus really take the will. Now we've accepted Christ. He's taken the will. And it, and there's so much value that Christ brings to our lives. We think that, you know, um, you know, I'm 25, I'm 23. I, I get saved. I know God. I know about Jesus, man. I, I get saved when I'm 50. I can wait. But nah, like get get the joy now. Get the peace now. Get the wisdom now. Get the knowledge now. Get your purpose now because tomorrow is not promised. And, you know, we, we never know when our time here on earth is going to be up. So we want to be covered under Christ so that when that time's come, we can hear, hey, come on in, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. So another thing we gain, we look here at Luke uh, chapter 18, verses 29 and 30. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children. Jesus taking your family out <laughs> um, for the sake of the, God, the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come in eternal life. Man. Man, 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 man. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says to them, no one who has left home, your familiar surroundings, your your home, your 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 current mindset, home, your default to dysfunction, home, you know, your your circle influence that's keeping you from Christ or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come in eternal life. So that means that God wants to bless your heaven and he wants to bless you on earth. God wants to bring the kingdom of heaven down. He wants to take that heavenly realm that he sits in at the right hand of the father and bring that down to earth so that you're going to be blessed here and you're going to be blessed in heaven. Jesus says that my father home has many mansions. If not so, I would not have told you. The thing is, you're going to get a mansion here and you're going to get a mansion in heaven. Now, everybody mansion is going to look different. We don't know that, but we know that it's going to be good according to God's purposes. So y'all think about that. If, if we pay the cost of discipleship, the rewards are that we know Christ, we're sanctified, we're, we're rectified with, with God, and then also anything that we give up, any cost that we give up, God is going to give it right back. And 
we can't outgive God. We really can't. Even when we tithe, we give 10%. God gives us, you know, much more. He gives us so much more. And I'm going to circle back, um, you know, with, with, you know, when, when Jesus is talking about us giving up our, our parents and our children and everything, I'm going to circle back because, and I'm going to go back to Matthew 12, 50, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is now my brother, my sister, my mother. The thing is he looked at his disciples when he said that. So Jesus is letting us know that, you know, we may have earthly friends, we may have uh, parents and, 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 and these attachments by blood, but he has spirit, you know, uh, family. He has a spiritual mother. He has a spiritual father. He has a spiritual group. He, he's got a crew for y'all. He's got a crew for us because we can't do this thing alone, y'all. So God has to provide on every level. If we pay the cost, he has to pay us back on each and every level, y'all. So that's, that's just a guarantee. God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man shall repent. The thing is, He's going to make sure that, hey, I know y'all down here on earth. I know it's hell down here. I know it's temptation. I know it's sin. I know it's fun down here. So if you're going to give up everything, if you're going to pay the cost to be with my son, I got to make sure that I, I give you something even better. Uh, that One of the things, um, and this is my personal testimony, one of the things that kept me from uh, coming to Christ, I always thought it was boring. I thought that church people just sat in church and talked about people and hung out at funerals. That That's what I thought it was. But since I came to Christ, um, I have so much more peace. The things that I'm doing are things that, excuse me, y'all, bless me. Things that I actually want to do, you know, um, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm seeing the world, I'm, I'm meeting great people, I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm moving in my purpose, I'm speaking, I'm still rapping, I'm still, you know, I'm doing ministry now. Like, it's like God has given me a whole new thing, a whole new thing, and, and he's given me a life to the full, to that overflows, really to the point where, you know, I, I speak about my past when I when I testify and share my testimony with others. But to be completely honest, I don't miss it, y'all. I, I remember being in the club, y'all, and to feel comfortable, I, I had to drink alcohol. Like I had to ha have a drink in my hand to feel comfortable around everybody else because outside of that, I felt I always felt out of place. So the thing is, when we pay this cost, y'all, when, when we sow our lives, when we sow you know, um, un, you know, these, these, uh, this paradigm that we have when, when we sow for Christ, he's going to give us so much more. But the thing is, he's going to give us a desire for holiness. He's going to give us that desire to live right. Even if, you know, we fall short, which we all will, because I feel Christ every day. But the thing is, even when we fall short, y'all, the thing is, we won't have a desire for it. If, if you end up at the club, if you end up you know, uh, falling in sin or, or, or doing something that, you know, is contrary to the word of God, you're going to be like, man, I want to go back to my safe place. Let me get back with God. Let me get back in this worship. Let me get back to my purpose. Let me, let me travel y'all. Let me, let me go to, you know, let me go see a good movie or something. Let me, let me get back to, you know, developing myself and my singleness. Let me get back to my flow. Cause I love God. And God is, is such a, a it's a wonderful covering to be under God because when we're, when we're in the world and, and, and we're not paying that cost for discipleship, and then when we come under that covering of God and, and we in Christ, man, it's a game changer. Having the Holy Spirit is a game changer. You look at life from a completely different perspective, y'all. And again, that's probably a whole nother teaching. But again, y'all, it's all about the cost of discipleships, and then we get the reward of salvation. Hallelujah, man. So I thank y'all for tuning in. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has enlightened you. I pray that the mind of Christ has just been, been lit, y'all. I pray that y'all are on fire right now. I pray that, that y'all are just fired up to live this life for Christ. I pray that um, any demonic strongholds on your mind that living for God isn't cool. Living for God is corny. I'll get saved when I'm 50. I can't live holy in my 20s. They telling me to enjoy my life and live my life and you only live once and all that. Man, listen, I pray that these demonic strongholds on your mind through culture 
have been broken in the mighty name of Jesus. So y'all, again, this is the cost of discipleship and the rewards of salvation. Bless y'all. We thank y'all, the prayer cipher family. We love y'all. We praying for y'all. And we look forward to catching y'all on the next Truth Tuesdays. Bless up. One.